to your spirit seekers podcast some delicious cases of violent hauntings hauntings of any kind are already scary enough as it is no one wants to run to the ghost of other apparition even when paranormal activity itself is rather innocuous can be jaunting experience that can scare and baffle yet some cases take it all and up a notch to evolve to something far beyond just creepy or eerie to become infused with violence and malicious intent launch themselves to the realm of truly scary encounters. The earliest violent hauntings we look at here date all the way back to the 17th century, and one that occurred in the country of Scotland. They lived in the Mackey family, and in February of 1695, their world would be turned upside down by the most intense hauntings in the record. It was then the members of the Mackey family, including the father, Andrew, and his wife, and children, began to experience old bouts of being absolutely ob- obscene sailed with various very flying objects such as stones, logs, furniture and other objects which could come flying out from all directions out of nowhere with enough force to, on many occasions to leave welts and bruises S- they scared of what was going on they called in a marina st- called Alexander Telfer was assaulted by flying objects and full seats planes through stones and delvers over things at me. Beat me several times on the shoulders and sides with a great staff so that those who were present heard the noise of blows. This would be all a graduate to even some intense episodes with the family's children being attacked by unseen hands, left red marks and scratches. Mysterious force at times would actually drag people kicking and screaming for the house, the objects, the herd objects around also became more dangerous with knives and other heavy instruments thrown with clear intent to harm. Such was the case the house blacksmith apparently being be, almost beheaded by a tossed trough and plowshare. To add even more to the mayhem were numerous odd fires that spring out over the place. There was a hulking shadow about a, a, a apparition that would appear on occasion around the home. It was surprising that, not surprising, the family took all this to be the work of demons. They got about many attempts to make the house exercised by clergy, with every one of them being faulted by high flying objects. None of the ministers being picked up, uh, one of them, some of the ministers being picked up and thrown for the air themselves. Ministers of continued efforts, things being even weirder than when the disbodied voice proclaimed, I should not be troubled till Tuesday. True to his word, the paranormal activity ceased that day, not before uh, the entity appeared. One last time, a genetic, genetic spinning black cloud, lung clots of dirt and mud, and the witness became, before fading away. It's hard to know if it's a work of ghosts or demons. It may be suddenly decided to leave the room, defying exorcism attempts, but it's definitely violent. For around the same period, just a few late years after the Maggie case in Scotland, we have the story that English torturer and war criminal, Lord Advocate Sir George Mackenzie, who carried out fierce punishments on Presbyterians during the efforts of King Charles II, being a country of Scotland under one religion. Many statistic tortures and execu- execution of Mackenzie carried out on Dunwoodie's statement spooky cemetery called Greyfriars Kirkyard had been turned into a sort of makeshift prison called the Cov Enters Prison. Shocking, by the time Mackenzie died in 1691, he had been responsible for the deaths of an estimated 18,000 people over a period of just eight years, making him a true monster, already making, making it iconic. He would be buried at the same cemetery, but he carried out a number good number of those atrocities where hundreds of his victims had been buried. He was buried in a specially designed tomb that's called the Black M- Mausoleum, a fitting name for such a torrent. Yes, the cemetery is haunted, quite so tapping remembered Emily. So interesting, the tales are haunting of the cemetery won't really take up off in hundred years later when in 1998 a homeless man probably was wondering around the area when he fell upon a scrummy session of Black Museum and tumbled into a chamber of inn. Man would suddenly emerge, the gloom driven mad, 
by unspeakable terrific things it seemed down to him. Another case, not long after, a woman was walking by and curiously peering f- through a rusty dying gate was allegedly to be full down, thrown back by a blast of cold air. Yet another woman was found on the premises unconscious, a bruising around her neck, suggesting that someone had tried to choke her to death. The victim never c- could not could remember nothing of the incident. After Bernard's attacks were continued, the scores of people claiming they had been brutally attacked by unseen forces on ground quite often leave, often leave cuts, scratches, bruises, broken bones, burns behind and s- severe nauseous blackouts are uncommon here, led to an official exorcism attempted on 17, 2002, carried out by Colin Grant, who said that it could sense how it felt hundreds of tormented angry souls lurking. It ended up being too much for him to bear. He ended up mysteriously dead of a sudden dark heart attack just a few weeks later. Whatever his eyes are cut for his Kirk is me, me, pissed off, whatever it is. Moving through to 1908, we come to the case of witnessing only known as M. Constance, formerly a French diplomat living in Constance, Turkey at the time. He claimed that he and his wife had been intensely tormented by some sort of vile supernatural entity during his stay here at a place called the Red Palace. The instances of violent paranormal activity appeared for a couple on many. One by occasion, the diplomat says he was pushed over by an invisible force and sent him sprawling to the floor. This same force is also reported to be lifting as a, his bed clear off the ground at times. His wife has, wife has po- also pushed down the stairs and tapped my s- strange back entity with a remnant of a goat. She was working on the garden. Her activity was so rel- relentless that vicious, he and his wife would leave the premises never return. In 1965, a rather young famous case of the village of Jacob Bogle, Brazil, with an 11 year old girl named Maria Josa Freer, was targeted by nefarious supernatural elements, a rather surreal air of the whole thing, with this activity starting out with rocks, stones, bricks, probably appearing out of thin air to go careering off to smashing furniture and smash married, married household items. Some of those rocks weighed up to 10 pounds each, and others manifested in the home from nothing thinness. Furniture and other items also tossed about the great force. In addition to this, mention America was ruthlessly attacked by unseen entities which would scratch, claw and bite her. There were truly bizarre episodes of needles peering in the skin out of nowhere with dozens of them appearing one time in some, in some instances. A girl went to school to her clothes probably burst into flame. This went on over a year. She ter- as a terrified family trying to figure out what to do. She pl- visited a psychic who told previous life she'd been a witch she been attacked by a vengeful spirit, someone she killed in the interaction. Maria had fought this violent haunting by herself at the age of 16, ending the haunting once and all by killing herself at the age of 16. In the 1970s, we come to another story of stories the holding of the Heath family of England, who had come to become one of the most famous and malicious portrait cases countries ever seen in August of 17. 17- 1972, a pirate fought to Heath. His wife was woken in the middle of the night by radio bursting some static in future mission of a foreign language they didn't understand. At Christmas, Fulton was in his family room checking on the Christmas tree, began to shake violently, and figurine went flying across the room that hit him on the head hard enough to leave a mark and send him sprawling backwards into a chair. New Year brought no respite as a strange phenomenon continued unbated. Loud, stomping footsteps steps were heard. Doors flung upon Von violently. Lights would flicker. The young son came to them, screaming. A tall, but angry-looking man in old flashing clothes had, had been standing over his bed. They were, even the guests were over. No one would figure out what cause would be. The family went up to the priest, who blessed the house. This did little to such of strangers. Indeed, it only seemed to get worse. Fanny went to a spirit medium, who explained the house would told them the spirit within was deceased another reformed resident called Chatterton, who saw the house family as a threat. 
Paul calling on, on to it. It was found a farmer who once lived there by the name of Chatterton. He called his place his home in the 18th century to make this even spooky still. Another entity thought to be the Chaucer's wife began to appear, materialising a disgusting old grey-haired hag, a following memory of memories about all hours. It got good to bad, and two ghosts began appearing on TV, even on TV screens. And for, after four years of putting up the sinister activity, the spook family moved away and all it ceased. Also back in the 1970s, another tale from England come from to the files of the Society of Psycho Research, Psychical Research. A 17-year-old girl known as Miss A. One evening, Miss A and some friends passed through a graveyard and joked they knocked over and over and over some headstones, an act that does not seem to have been, been, been without consequence. A few m- l- nights later, Miss A woke up suddenly in the middle of the night to see the apparition of an old crone sitting in a chair near her bed. She would later write it off as a bad dream. This proved to be anything but. In the coming weeks, Miss A would follow it up, followed by the old grey entity, and would see her pop the constant pop up constantly. It didn't seem to be particularly friendly either. It began to display some rather ominous behaviour. Miss A would claim that an apparition would pop out of nowhere, yank objects from her head, particular boiling trinkets of over items to inflict harm. Mrs A's mother would experience this when the vacuum clean was twisted full powerful force right at the hands. There'd be strange water leaks out display with various anonymous bags, bangs of thumbs as well as objects tossed from whatever false. Things got very odd. Miss A, one day when the blade days began babbling about a past life where she began to, where she was a daughter of a French doctor. As soon as she woke, she began displaying odd somnolency. She found she could physically move objects or bend tins of false. She was able to send a family on a on their way. It said that Miss A had returned to the abandoned home some time later to find the back door broken. She rarely entered the premises to discover the telephone still hanging there. She securely piped up the receiver to see. So it says that something roughly grabbed her by the throat and began to choke her into submission. She managed to tear herself away and exit the premises, never return. You've been listening to Lincolnshire Period Podcast. I've been talking about malicious cases of violent hauntings.